Welcome back. Today's module will be all about holding your guitar, holding a pick, covering some wrist exercises, and talking all about strings, how to restring an electric, an acoustic, and a classical guitar, a nylon string guitar, and we're also gonna talk about tuning it. So after you've purchased your guitar, if you got anything out of the last module, I really, really hope that you did, and I cannot thank Holden Hill Music and the staff enough for their time and for giving their information to you as well. Uh, if you need to get any of your strings, picks, guitars, amps, you name it, they've got a massive range online. Check it out in the link below. Uh, thank you again, Holden Hill Music. So, today's module is holding a guitar. Number one, you have to be comfortable. Check this guy out, it looks remarkably like me. Have a go at this vision. Sitting upright, he's got his hands. I have. Let's talk about me in the third person, shall I? What a great idea. Right, so I've got my hands got the thumb at the back of the fretboard, I have the neck tilted up slightly. Now, your back, ah, best not to slouch. Don't slouch over. Does not anything good for your back in the long run. If you have a, uh, a back chair, like a good office chair, utilize that. Um, leaning over a guitar to, to look at stuff, especially when you're looking at, say, um, I don't know, sheet music or your phone to have a look at whatever tabs you're getting into can be a bit of a nasty habit to get into. So please, while you're learning, try and create some good habits for yourself and don't be like Ben and get into bad habits that hurt your back when you get older. Right, so don't slouch, please. Using the, your fingers, the tips of your fingers on the fretboard, now the tips of your fingers are where you're gonna get the cleaner sounds. If you use the flat of your finger, that's um, it's a bit of a, a no-no, only because uh, you'll hit other strings and if you've got the tips of your fingers, it will just give it nice clean sounds. Try not have your finger in the fretboard too far back towards the fret or too close to the fret, otherwise it will sound something like this. When it should sound something like this. Cool? So have a look at that, that vision. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory, I think. Uh, if it sounds bad, just shift your finger around a bit until it sounds a lot better. Now your fingers may hurt. They may hurt, but this is temporary. Especially if you've got a steel string acoustic guitar when you're starting out, uh, they can be pretty rough on your fingers. I mean, nylon strings will tend to be a little bit uh, tender as well, but they're a lot more gentle and a little bit more forgiving on a beginner's fingers. Hence the reason why a lot of people will say, yes, you should get a, a nylon string classical guitar. Now this is temporary. You will work through it. Don't fall for any of the fads and gimmicks like them dumb plastic fingers things that just, yeah, I, uh, or, you know, people tell you to put some type of glue on your fingers, that's very temporary still and your fingers will still hurt. If you work through this, you build callus, you'll build up a strength in your fingers and after about maybe a week or two weeks at the most, uh, you should, should be on the path. If you're practicing regularly, then your fingers will toughen up very quickly. If your fingers are hurting while you were practicing, take a break. There's no reason for you to not take a break. And taking a break is actually also quite beneficial because you can think about whilst you've been practicing, if you've been working on a certain chord or a certain lick or a certain riff or a, a certain something, whatever it is that you're working on and you still aren't getting it right and you get really frustrated, you walk away from the guitar, you put it down gently, don't throw it, I know what that's like, don't throw it, you'll just hurt your guitar and then it'll make you feel sad. When you walk away, you can visualize what it is that you can do better to fix up that practice, whether that's just trying a completely different new technique, shifting your arm around a little bit, putting your finger in a different spot, you might even get throw the pick out and use your fingers. Whatever it is that works, visualize what it is that you think you can do, and when you go back to practicing again, nine times out of 10, you make vast improvements just by thinking about it. So physical practice is great, so is mental practice. Fighter pilots do it all the time, helicopter pilots and even, you know, commercial jet pilots, they, they do this type of thing all the time. So that way, it's muscle memory. They don't have to rethink a whole bunch of this stuff, especially when there's something that, that you know untoward going on, they go straight to what they need to do. And that's the same thing as learning a guitar, is you really want to have the, the thought straight here and it happens instantly in your hands. And that's the whole idea of my fast guitar method, is to make sure that you've got all of this information, all of the, the tools and the skills that you need to just look at something and go, bang, I can play that. Holding a guitar is very important for this because if you're uncomfortable or you're not getting the right reach, it, make things, it will make things a whole lot harder. Right, going on 
Before we start practicing now, I want to go through some wrist exercises. These are pretty simple. Very overlooked though. Uh, these are, this is a great one that my teacher back in the late 90s was, well, even early, early 90s, oh gosh, was telling me about it. Uh, and this is what he did. So you just put your, well, your fretboard hand, whichever hand you want. I always go for the fretboard hand. Uh, you put it straight out, your arms sort of bent a little bit, fingers up towards your face, and just gently bring them back. And you'll feel that stretch right down through here. Just for about five seconds. Don't bounce it, just nice and easy. Let it go, give your wrist a bit of a shake. Now put your hands upside down and do the opposite. Give it a bit of a pull. And again, you'll feel it down here. You'll also feel a little bit on here as well. Yep, just like that, handshake, and then go for each one of the fingers. Backwards, and then you're good to go. Give them a bit of a whirl. Now, ligaments are great, muscles are great. They, do, they are what you need to get the strength in through the fretboard to make sounds. Um, and if you're not stretching them, then they can tighten up. Again, it's kind of like exercise. This is all about muscle memory. And if you're running or you're lifting weights and you don't stretch beforehand, you can do some permanent damage and it could even hinder uh, your progress while you're doing it. So that's what I'm gonna go on about with the wrist exercises. Please, before you pick up the guitar, just a quick one, even if it's simple, you're so excited to get in. Yep, that'll do, right? Try and do that every single time you pick up the guitar. Righty, yeah, moving on to holding a pick. Now, <laughs> picks, they are what you'd call, uh, these, are, these things are magic. They come in uh, countless shapes, sizes, thicknesses, patterns, you name it, even different types of material. There's some made of wood and metal. I don't recommend using metal on your uh, strings. They might be good for wearing a, going on, I don't know, a holiday to the Bahamas or something and wearing a, a metal pick on you with some crazy slogan, whatever. You can get these at every music shop. I recommend if they've got like a cool little bucket that has a whole bunch of different shapes and sizes, get a handful, you know, a couple of dollars, whatever it is that you want to spend, and then try out which ones work for you. They all make weird different sounds. Uh, when I mean weird, they're the real thin ones. They kind of they, they slap against the strings so you can hear the rhythmic strumming of it. If you've got harder picks, uh, they don't make as much of a sound, but they won't be as pliable. And as you're strumming, you'll find that you may break a lot of strings and it won't sound as musical or sound kind of clunky in a way. Um, heavier picks are uh, used mostly for uh, solo guitarists, lead guitarists. Uh, the, the lighter type of picks are, you know, for um, strumming. Now, I use a 0 0.60 millimeter pick. Uh, here's a picture of some of the ones that I've had made up from Intune guitars, uh, Intune picks. You can also get these made up at Grover Orman. There's a link in the book. Um, one other thing you really need to know about picks, as I said, they're magic, is that when you lose one, they disappear. They completely go to a different, I guess, a different dimension. So if anyone ever wants to know more about uh, wormholes or string theory, or all of that strange type of physics, um, speak to a guitarist because they'll always talk to you about how a guitar pick just disappears you might be sitting in the lounge and you might be holding it in your hand and then you drop it and it just goes. And then you wonder, well, where did that go? Uh, and then two days later, it'll show up in the kitchen and you think, well, I was at somebody else's house. How'd that happen? Anyway, if you put them in your back pocket, be wary that they will end up looking like this when you do laundry. And if you know your mum or your wife or your girlfriend or whoever does your laundry, they can get pretty upset with you about that. Now, holding a pick's pretty simple. Um, don't squeeze the life out of it. And that's basically really all you need to know about holding a pick. Uh, if you want to use your middle finger to do, use it, by all means, but I use my index and my thumb. One final note on guitar picks. I said that they go to a weird dimension. Uh, usually that dimension might be in a sound hole. You'll be playing along and next, next minute it just it falls in. So how do you get it out? <laughs> kind of like doing this, right? Guitar pick in there so that's the guitar pick just bashing around way that I like to do it to get out of it instead of going up and down just hoping for the best that takes a while what you want to do is get the guitar and sort of like ease the guitar pick down to the very bottom of this curve and then just get it to come all the way up where did he go there he is uh, so you can see it 
and it's just in through the sound hole on the very bottom of this curve here that sits on your leg. So what you need to do then is just sort of gently shake it until it comes into about right below where the sound hole is. So at the, the back of the body, there's two struts that line up and I, you try and get it in there and get it right about where the sticker is over the above uh, the sound hole itself. And then, this is the trick, really quickly, put it upside down and then hope that it comes out. Now, I just got a whole bunch of wood and stuff come out of this guitar and it would appear that the pick's gone missing. As I said, they just do that. It's probably on the floor somewhere, but that's a really, really quick way of getting one out uh, rather than pull all the strings off or get your hand up there or, like I said, shake it around like a, a shaky thing. Um, try and do that if you lose a pick. Otherwise, you know, just let it off the two into the void. Let it off into the universe. Goodbye, pick. Anyway, that's all I had to add. Thank you, and we're going to crack on with the strings just about now. Cheers.